when I was in the primary school, I was lazy beyond description. To read was trouble. I, I knew how to play. How to read, I didn't know. I didn't understand life or education or anything. I mean, people were going to school. I was sent to school. I went to school, finished. But 1960, in class four, or on holidays, I waited behind. Then I sat down and said, look at my age now. And school start is coming next year. Am I going to live my life like this? So I just changed. During that time, I took the notes of all the others in biology, in chemistry, in physics, and all the other notes they have been writing. I sat down, I wrote everything. I said, now I am going to make this thing. But that class four, I sat down, I said, this thing that is causing failure, I'm going to rectify it. Nobody talked to me. In fact, they didn't know that I would ever make anything. I just decided, I didn't even know the reason. I, it wasn't because, well, being the firstborn of my father, not, no, I didn't even think of that. Being uh, this or being, I didn't think, it's just that, ah, ah, since primary school. Why am I like this? And I said, this year, school start is coming, I'm going to do something. All the other students will say, ah, and say, come on, A1, A1, A1. Because I wrote, everybody can say, I just wrote everything down there. And I studied. And you know, I had one of the best results in our class, in school search. I went to Mayflower School. In Mayflower School, because uh, we were the second set, the first set started in 1956. We came in in 1957. When we came in, no dormitory. When we came in, we didn't have all the things that we needed. Therefore, our beds were put at the veranda of the classroom, all lined about. And they are double-decker. And the veranda is a little bit high. So if you fall from even the veranda, you can break your leg. If you fall from the double-decker bed to the veranda, then to the ground, you'll get to the hospital. So at that very young age, we were taught about discipline about consecration and about commitment. I went to University of Ibadan. From the University of Ibadan, all through like that, by the time I would come out, I had the best result in the whole university. But that's because 1960, I sat down, I said, this failure that had been following me from primary school up to this point, I'm breaking it. I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't born again. I just said, this one, it will not continue. I'm breaking this one. You should break failure in your life. You'll be surprised that, you know, when I came in in year one, uh, because I didn't go to what we called HSC then, and I didn't do all the subjects I should have done, because I was a kind of a self-made student myself. After secondary school, I just started preparing for GCA level, and all I could do was mathematics, the physics I couldn't do. And when I went to university, they, they accepted me for mass, mass, uh, geology. But it was at the point of registration that the fellow looked at my papers and I said, no, you won't do geology, you'll do physics. I said, is that so? He said, yes. And so he went around and changed everything. And I, did, I knew next to nothing on these physics at that level. And there was a young man in that class that took interest in me. If we were to perform any experiment, he will say, this is how they do it. This is how they plot the graph. And this is how they measure this. And this is how they test this. I will say, thank you. If we did all the experiments, then he will tell me, ah, when you have done all the experiments and found out this and you have written all those things, how do you make your conclusion? What are the theories that you know that will back up all the things you have done to be able to present this on paper? And this young man will teach me this and teach me this. And sometimes when he wants to teach me, we're in the same class, I'll say, no time now. Uh, it's time for Bible now. Ah. And he'll say, uh, what's the matter with you? I'm trying to help you. You won't be able to make it. I said, I will make it. Just uh, when I have time, I'll send for you. And after studying Bible, I had to read the previous progress. I had the timetable. Then I had to study the theory of music. I had to, you know, practice the organ. I had to do this and that. And the fellow said, you will not make this scene. You know that I left him at university because even though he was teaching me, he didn't make it. I made it. I was uh, taught and schooled and trained under an atheist. And we learned about atheism. We learned there was no God, there was no miracle, there was no prayer, there was no power, there was no Christ, there was no religion. The Bible was just writing of the Jews. That's what we learned. 
and we learned about all the atheists of the past generation. And I follow the principle so much that he even loved me to the point he sent me to university. And the Mayflower School paid all my school fees, gave me all the pocket money I need. And I came back there still teaching. I, I love that school. But God called me. It's not my fault. And all the things that they taught us before, I began to see they are not true. That there is God. And I, I didn't know about knowing God. I wasn't planning I would serve God. I wasn't running after God saying, Lord, I want this, I want this, I want that. I was getting in all these principles and atheistic ideologies. But then God spoke his word to my heart and said, give me your heart. And it was real that I stand at the door and knock. I couldn't see him, but I was hearing the knock. It was deep. I could sense it. And then the altar call was made. I went forward. I prayed. Joy filled my heart. The things I did before, I couldn't do them anymore. All the time we were being taught on atheism. I was stealing library book from the school. When I got converted, I went to Tashiola and I said, I've been stealing all the library books. I made all the confessions. And he looked at me and said, you have always been one of my good boys. I said, yes, but good boy did not really make it. I was still stealing and doing things that were wrong. He saw that a change came over my life. All my other friends at school, they said it will soon be over. They gave me two weeks that all those things will be over. More, almost 25 years have come and gone. It's not over yet. And I still love the Lord. In this country and in this life, the Lord has called me that I will preach the sanctification and the holiness because that's my very vision, that's my very life, that's my very calling. Give me holiness and take the rest of the things away. And so when I became a lecturer at the University of Lagos, 1973 August, I decided that, well, if there were only just a few people that wanted this word of God, I think it's good for us to just get together and study the Bible. And for all those years, I was able to get 15 people that said they wanted the Bible. And so we decided August 3rd, 1973, we'll come together and study the Bible. And then as we study the Bible on holiness, on evangelism, on the totality of the revelation of the Word of God, these people were like babes. And they were willing to study the Word of God. And they started coming and started coming. Challenges have come on the way. And some of the people have confronted me and they have said, this will not last. I had a particular man that came to me and he said he was prophesying. He said everybody has spoken to me that this holiness is not possible, sanctification is not possible, that is not possible, and therefore now he came with a prophecy. And he came to my house and I, you know, I said, come in. I didn't know what he was coming for. And then when he uh, sat down, he greeted me and then he became serious like an Old Testament prophet. And uh, then he said that I came to you from the Lord. Oh, I said, is that so? And then he began to say that because you have not accepted to change because of this, because of that, this thing is going to break and then nobody will follow anymore and this and that. And when he said that, I said, well, do you know something? If everybody left and I was the only one remaining that was going to stand on holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. He looked up at me very bold and, you know, very, very firm. And he said, that you have said is the confirmation of the word of prophecy I brought. Everybody is going to leave and this a deeper life will not uh, remain because you stand alone on this holiness and everybody says we disagree and you're still continuing. What I want to tell you, that person that said that is nowhere to be found today. But you know, the word of God has remained. And eventually... I discovered the power of the Holy Ghost. And then uh, the power of the Holy Ghost in me, and, uh, and that's happened in the, you know, as I was here in the area of the West here, Lagos, and over here that I was. And then when I got the power, and people were getting healed, then I ran home. I said, why is that so? Because I knew not the power had come to pray for him. And he said, didn't you hear? He was dead. And when I heard that, I said, all the people remaining, I'm going to develop this power. The gift of the Spirit, so that anywhere, anyone has any problem, I'll be able to get there immediately. That's the challenge I had. It was because of what happened in our family circle. 
that really pushed me to say this will not happen again. The devil has cheated us enough. It will not happen again. And you must understand I come from a different world. I come from the world of the Bible. And I come with immersing my mind and my brain and my heart and my spirit and my personality, everything. Immersing it into the Bible. I don't know other thing. I come from a different area from many people. You see, when some people think about the things of the world and they talk about the things of the world and they are so jubilant about it and they say, I have a hard time giving up this. I have a hard time giving up this. I don't understand. I don't understand. Because you see, when you are immersed in this word of God, all these things they do in the world, in fact, everything I see in the world immediately comes to me almost unconsciously that the devil is the God of this world. If I see any style in the world, if I see of any new kind of music, immediately I know that the devil is a god of this world. He's the one that controls the system and the custom and the music and, and the politics and everything that goes on. The devil is a god of this world. And because of that, any of those things, they don't even hold any interest for me. Any interest at all. I have a ministry, I have a calling, and I have, you know, I'm a man of one goal, one direction. I don't look here. I don't look there. Something They say something wonderful is going on there. I don't know about that. This is the only thing I know to be wonderful. Now you church, you need to support your pastor. Because I go outside and I face, you know, real, real tough time. Because, you know, I take the same message everywhere I go. And if I face challenges outside, if I face opposition outside, and I'm still praying that God will help me to stand, and I will not change the message, and then I come into the midst of my people, my own brethren, and then I cannot declare the truth to you, and then we are kind of, and we don't have backbone, and we're afraid. Even with our own children, if I'm afraid with my own children, I'm going to have boldness and courage. I'm for teaching and tenacity outside there. That's why you need to encourage your pastor so that by the grace of God, this fire of revival and this word of truth will never die out of this church in Jesus' name. Amen.